Welcome to another Guitar Business YouTube Hangout. What we're going to do today is talk to uh, my very special guest today, which is Will Ripley. Will has a, uh, a website called uh, campfireguitarstar.com. He's done a lot of stuff online. Uh, I've noticed Will for some time now, and he's, he's definitely one of the movers and shakers online, and I really wanted to get him on here to have a chat and just to share some of his ideas. Um, one of the things that I really love about Will is that he's always doing stuff. He's, he's not one of these guys who's sort of waiting for things to happen. Um, he's out there literally, you know, do, promoting his, uh, I think every day I see him online somewhere, somehow doing something. Um, not that I'm stalking you, Will, but um, yeah, your name pops up a lot. Facebook has a habit of um, turning us all into stalkers these days, whether we want to be or not. Um, so so without any, any more ado, uh, Will's coming from uh, Calgary, by the way, in Canada. Um, so Will, uh, welcome. How's it going, guys? Thanks for having me. I really uh, am looking forward to helping people and sharing my knowledge about guitar teaching and just digging in. This will be fun. Beautiful. Well, let, let's just, what I'll do, and what, you know, in these conversations, what I like to do, I keep them pretty casual, and what we're going to do is just start off with getting to know you a little bit, for those who don't know you. And so, your history, when did you first pick up a guitar? What, what was your guitar evolution, so to speak? Yeah, um, so I'm 30 now, and I started playing guitar when I was nine, and um, yeah, I was just a little kid, man, just uh, stoked up on electric guitar and was really attracted to it. Um, you know, I think movies like Back to the Future and uh, the Blues Brothers really influenced me. And uh, <laughs> so those, Timeless uh, classics. Timeless. Yeah, you, you know, of course, that iconic scene when he rocks Johnny Be Good for the for the school dance, and um, and then actually uh, earlier on in the in the movie, I don't know if you remember, but he he does an audition for his his school in 1985, yes. and uh, and they, and they say you're just too darn loud, you know. They shut them down. Anyways, I just love the idea of like, you know, performing and and uh, doing that kind of thing for my school one do, day. Do you know, just just one point there. Do you know who's on that megaphone? Who who actually says that? No, I don't. This is the irony of it. Is it's actually Huey Lewis, right? Huey oh, Lewis. No yeah, yeah. Of love. That's his song, right? That's of and, course. And, no, and so I, just I for a bit of com comical, uh, you know, humor there, he they get Huey Lewis to do that little bit. Nice trivia piece. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, well. See, I'm from that era. You know, I was, as you know, I've said before, uh, that was kind of set in 1985, right? I finished year 12 in 1984, so basically, I was the same age as Marty McFly. So that was my my era. And uh, Huey Lewis and the News, they were, you know, they were big at that time. The, the, I think you know the album Sports was was an album, one of the albums I had. So yeah, we were into that. So so we knew him when we saw him. Yeah, yeah anyway, sorry. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah um, but yeah, that's kind of how I got, got my start. And um, yeah, I, actually, I started taking guitar lessons uh, from a fantastic guitar player um, who was a terrible teacher. And uh, so it was a nine-year-old kid, really inspired to play uh, electric guitar. And I was playing the most boring songs ever. Um, and I actually almost, put down the guitar and quit for good. And uh, I happened to be moving at that time. And so I moved, got a new guitar teacher who was totally fantastic. And he taught me blues and rock and taught me my favorite songs as well as, um, you know, being a nine year old kid, it's like, you don't really know anything about the blues. So he was, he was teaching me cool things like the 12 bar blues and pentatonic scales and stuff like that. And, and, and it totally, um, you know, established me as a little little rocker, you know. So that's that's kind of how I got my got my start. Yeah, excellent. Because you you would you describe yourself as a blues rock guitarist? Is that? Yeah, I play a lot of blues, a lot of classic rock, and um, I'm a big '90s alternative fan. Um, okay, cool. Yeah, all yep. the '90s alternative grunge and stuff like that too. So I love all, basically '60s, '70s, '80s, '90s rock blues. You know, the the whole. The whole well, thing. we we. We always imagine, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you, you know, we imagine the grunge scene coming from like Seattle. That was where it all sort of emanated from. Bands like Nirvana, um, Sound, yeah, yeah Alice in Chains, yeah, Chain. yeah. So that was yeah, exactly. That was the scene. And and you are you originally from Vancouver or where are you from? No, I'm uh, I'm originally from British Columbia, Canada, but uh, I just I spent a bunch of years in Vancouver playing music in my twenties. But, okay, but that, right. that time, yeah. like, 
I, I'm like, I'm totally past the, uh, like missed the boat on a lot of that stuff because, um, you know, I graduated in the early, early 2000s. So, you know, in the mid nineties, I was still just a little kid, you know? Um, yeah. so I, I kind of missed the, missed the boat on a lot of, you know, really iconic, great music, but, uh, you know, somehow, some way between, between friends and family and going to music college and studying and playing and getting immersed in bands and all that kind of stuff. I, I somehow like just really gravitated to a lot of older styles of music. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, you know, if you, especially with your lessons and so forth, if you're learning that style, blues, rock, whatever, you, you tend to go back to the classics, you identify with it. So yeah, I totally get that. Yeah. Um, yeah, even in my era, you know, I'm 50. So when I was, Yep, you there? Back? Yeah, just froze like, there. Just a little, yeah, it, was, it happens sometimes with Google Hangouts. Nothing to oh. do with me or, well, let's blame Google. Um, so, yeah, so, 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 you know, for me, it was, was Led Zeppelin, the Beatles. They were pre my era, but that was what we were getting into because that was the, you know, the classic rock of the time. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, think, I think that happens a lot. You sort of go back a little bit. I see kids today, you know, we're talking 10, 12-year-old kids who are playing the blues uh, that, that are right into it, and some of them are very good players. I don't see that little kid that plays Stevie Ray Vaughan. Um, but, yeah, this, he's, he's amazing. Uh, he's only like 10 and he's playing yeah, Stevie Ray Vaughan, like really note for note. Um, there's also the Japanese, little Japanese girl as well, who's uh, she's right into all the... The progressive rock. She's into dream theater and, and all that. She's about twelve, and her name's Lisa X. And yeah, she's yeah. she's great to check out as well. Now um, that you're so, it, I think I've caught some of those viral videos. But yeah, it seems to be like whenever whatever kind of whenever you're graduating high school, I find that whatever music is in that era is really you know uh, um, really impactful on you. And so in the early two thousands, uh, there was still rock and roll around. There's bands like Audio Slave and um, Velvet Revolver, who who had you know that was like Guns N' Roses, Stone Temple Pilots, Soundgarden, Rage Against the Machine, you know, super groups. So I was able to kind of backtrack and then find out, hey, Led Zeppelin and Jimi Hendrix and Aerosmith really influenced those guys. Oh, and you know, going even further back, you know, so I kind of like moved backwards in my rock and roll. So yeah, that's, yeah, that's, yeah, so true. So true. It was the same was with the same Led Zeppelin. Zeppelin. If you look at Led Zeppelin, they went. They went, they went, they went, they went Influence, uh, you know, the, the early blues players, the Muddy Waters, and the, uh, you know that that kind of fifties, uh, you know, really raw uh, blues, and yeah, and that's the Rolling Stones were the same. They got influenced. Chuck Berry influenced them all, um, you know, and it kind of almost has done the complete circle where uh, you know Chuck Berry has really influenced everyone. I don't think anyone, whether they know it or not. Can, who plays a guitar anyway, who plays electric guitar, can say that they're not uh, either influenced by Chuck Berry or they're not influenced by someone who was influenced by Chuck Berry. Yeah. See, we just did a full circle. Now we're back to Back to the Future. You know, that's that was, <laughs> was one of my original influences, you know, <laughs> the Chuck Berry's. So, yeah, absolutely. Exactly. All, all thanks to his cousin Marvin, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> all right. So um, moving right along. Uh, so... So you, you had a teacher, your first teacher was was a great guitarist, but he wasn't a great teacher. So what would you say about him that wasn't a good teacher? When you say wasn't a good teacher, what's one or two things that you would identify as he was definitely lacking? Yeah, so um, I think the big thing is, is when, uh, you know, so I was this nine-year-old kid that wanted to play rock and roll. And so he sits me in, in this room and puts this songbook in front of me where I'm going to learn uh, how to read music and read, you know, and learn how to play songs kind of like, you know, some, some of the more popular ones or ones that I actually knew were like, you know, Ode to Joy by Beethoven or Jingle Bells, you know, or stuff, stuff like that. But then there was a whole gamut of songs that, you know, 
God, I don't know if anybody's ever heard of them, you know? So yeah. um, that was like really uninspiring. And I always, the end, but I'm in ways I'm so grateful for that because what it made me think about was, hey, if I ever taught guitar, I think I, my approach would be a lot different. What I would do is, you know, find out what songs this kid really likes, or maybe I'll show them some cool riffs and uh, and get them stoked up on that. And and sure enough, I mean, God, it just works so much better to get, to get a, a little kid excited about guitar to show them some cool songs, you know. So yeah, and I think it's we, we talk about because we talk about the balance and you know G four, and I, I think it's really important to have the balance, which is, and, and I think that's where a lot of teachers find the difficulty in that they you know there are certain things. It, it's it's like education generally, you know, when you go to school, there are certain things you have to learn, whether you want to learn them or not. Um, you know, you got to learn the alphabet, you got to learn to read and write. Um, as boring as those subjects as might be, and as much as kids would prefer to watch cartoons on TV, um, there are things that we know that they need to learn in order to, to get to where they want to go. Uh, so the question is, how do we make, uh, you know, it's the old saying of, uh, you know, promote what people want, but give them what they need. And so how do we give them what they need through what they want? And, and it sounds like what you're doing is you're taking songs, which is what they want, and you're breaking it down into things that they need to learn, such as, you know, scales and, and, and you know, notation and, and picking and chords and theory and, and it, is it? Would I, am I about right in what you're saying there? You, you sort of that's how you're approaching it. Yeah, you bet. So I think a great example is this product that I just um, just filmed and recorded, and and it's uh, it's out available now. It's um, it's basically 50 songs from the 1960s. So I break down uh, 50 songs of, of you know some of the most iconic rock songs of the 1960s, and so I'm just basically teaching them, uh, teaching on video how to play them, but also, you know, as I'm teaching them, like, hey, let's talk about this scale that's taking place here. Let's talk about why this lick sounds so good over this particular chord. Um, you know, let's talk about some of the magic and the mystery and, and those techniques behind that amazing song. And sometimes it can be just as simple as, um, you know, here's, here's a very simple, like here's the actual guitar line to this canned heat song or whatever, or you could play it like this, or you could play it like this, or you could play it like this. Um, you know what I mean? So definitely expanding yeah. on, on some of the basics and Beautiful. and yeah, teaching some of those those uh, uh, the techniques and the theory behind behind that song. Yeah. yeah, and and I think you know, and, and you can see it. I can I can see it with the way you talk, the way you present yourself. I've seen some of your videos, and I think a lot of it is is the, the enthusiasm to which you share what it is. There's a I don't know if you've ever re read any of Doug Lemol's stuff, but he the Teach Like a Champion, which is a fantastic book. Um, it's a, basically on a, re a research project that he did with you know thousands of hours of of video of watching the be you know the best teachers school teachers, we're talking about classroom teachers in the US, and he studied them to see what the, the best attributes of them, what they had in common. But one of the things he talks about, which is fantastic, is that you know, he, he talked about when he went into uni and he had to do English literature, and he said he, uh, he dreaded having to do this subject, but it ended up becoming the best subject of all, and he puts it down to the actual lecturer and the enthusiasm and the excitement and the, the presentation of the lecturer. And so I think that has a lot to do with it as well. I think that, that you, you, especially, you know, when I look at great teachers, if I look at you, um, there's always a lot of enthusiasm behind what you're doing. It's not, you're not just, oh, this is a blues lick, it'll, you know, put your finger here and then put your finger, you, you, you've got a lot more excitement in what you do. So um, any thoughts on that in terms of presentation, the way that you, you present, present the information? Yeah, I mean, um, I've never really thought about myself as being uh, enthusiastic, but that's that's cool to hear, that's, uh, that's nice to hear. Um, what, what I think is the biggest key to um, to teaching guitar is being likable, and because I mean, you know, for the people listening today, if if you, which I'm assuming are going to be a lot of guitar teachers, am I? Am I yes, right correct, that? absolutely. Yeah, so, it'll be ninety percent. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, what we're selling is um, is like the whole repeat experience, because if you want to have uh, one person come in for a one time, one hour lesson. That's great. You'll get paid, but there's like, what, what are you going to do with that? There, that's, then you have to find another client, right? 
And so um, the big thing with uh, with my lessons when we were doing the one-on-one -on -one lessons, running a whole guitar school in Vancouver, um, to our one-on-one -on -one webcam lessons that we're doing now, to my video courses and everything, is, uh, is having that repeat customer. Because like a lot of our customers have been with us for years. I have people dating back to years and years ago, and they're still taking lessons with me to this day. Um, yeah. Like I, I even have a, a student who's who took lessons with me, I think seven or eight years ago. And naturally you're gonna have people that come and go, um, but these guys will come back to us and take lessons again. So, um, and I mean, you tell me, David, I mean, if you're sitting down with somebody an hour every single week and you don't like them, I mean, how long are you gonna continue that for? Not yes. very long. So Not long. That's, uh, that's really the big thing is, is um, I've always really liked seeing that that uh, that look in people's eyes when they light up and they and they're like, oh, that's how I get it, or they or they come back the next week and they're super happy and they're like, hey, check this out, or or whatever. And I um, I don't really um, like like people that much. I'm kind of like an introvert. <laughs> yep, <laughs> you know, yep. I'm just being honest. I'm uh, you know, I have a very small select group of friends. Um, and, uh, and stuff like that. But, and so I don't think that you need to love people to be a great guitar teacher, but I think that you need to love some sort of aspect about people or the interaction with people. So for me, I really love helping people and I love coaching people. Um, and that just like really excites me. And that's so great. that's what I get, get out of it, you know? Yeah. So. And, and I love your honesty. Okay, you, you, you're not out there sort of saying, hey, I love working with people, they're just great, and, you know, it excites me. Now, you're being honest, which is fantastic, and, but, and, and that's why what you're saying is, is the truth, because it's the coaching, the helping, the developing of students, obviously, that, that, that you know, excites you. Um, and and I, I'm similar, like, it's, I actually, you know, I wouldn't say that I don't like people, I do like people, um, and I like, you know, learning and mixing out with people, but, but for me, uh, I loved, I'm almost like the, the, the crazy scientist, I love experimenting, and, and through, the, through the teaching, experimenting as a teacher, to me, was one of the, and I wouldn't say it was always like that, there was a period early on, you know, I started teaching very young, at sort of 18, 19, uh, and and it was sort of, it went through a period where it was a bit of a dread, but there was a period, there was a turning point where I, I looked at it very differently uh, and started to see it as a science lab. Here I had these students who were like guinea pigs and I could experiment on them um, to see what worked and what didn't work and that really was the turning point for me. So ever since then I've been a bit of a mad scientist, if you like, when it comes to teaching. Um, so, so I think you, what you're saying, and, and I think what we're, we're both saying here, is you've got to find your joy. You've got to find your excitement, whatever it is, in what you do. Uh, otherwise, stop doing it. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, okay. for sure. And um, so, and on the other side of it, when we're looking at it from a customer's perspective, they have to like spending time with you, okay? And um, if you're a, so you have to be likable in some kind of way. And, um, and, I mean, people can learn how to do that. There's books and there's coaching and stuff that on, on how you can learn how to interact with people. Um, one book that comes to mind is uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People. Yep. Uh, heard of that one, I'm, I'm guessing? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. Yep. yeah, super old book. I think it's from like the 20s maybe or something like that. Pretty old, yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, maybe 40s. But yeah, Dale Carnegie, it's, it's, it's a classic, yeah. Yeah, super old book. Um, but anyways, it's... It just, you know, once you find out just some some basic things that you can do to make people feel good, to make people feel motivated, excited, um, they're gonna come back, you know. And then plus, if you mix that in with awesome value, if they, you know, they get awesome value, they they're learning their favorite songs, um, and they like hanging out with you, man, they're gonna come back every single week for freaking years, you know. That's and, that's, and that's how that's how you. Uh, really, that's like the core of a guitar teaching business, in, in my idea. Anyways, uh, absolutely. So, so, what would be if we take sort of one thing from Dale Carnegie? He said, Pe "We like people who like us, right?" So that's just one way. If you if you, if you want to be likable, uh, start by liking them. So, in, in have you got any other tips that you use to be likable? Yeah. So check this out. So, um, in the first five minutes of any lesson, 
um, of course, you know, a student will come in and they get their guitar bag and, um, you know, so it's the, their guitar has been in the back of their car or whatever, and naturally it's going to be out of tune. So the first five minutes of any lesson, I would suggest anybody do this, which is while the person is tuning, so you don't feel like there's any wasted time or you're just, you know, just shooting the shit or whatever, like while that person is tuning, um, strike up a conversation. How's your week going? What's going on? And then once you start developing a relationship with this person, remember like what they said the week before. Oh, well, let's talk about how did that thing go last week? You know, what's what's going on? What's going on with your dog, your kids, your uh, whatever, you know? And, um, and yeah, and before you know it, um, you'll have, you'll create bonds and friendships with these people. And believe it or not, um, I, I just got married last summer. And uh, one of my groomsmen, was uh, originally a student. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a, that's true friendship. There you go. <laughs> he, found, he found me online by uh, searching guitar teacher in Vancouver. Found my website, and we just started doing lessons for like a year and a half or something like that. Um, he was one of those solid, committed students, and developed a friendship with them, and you know that the lasted year. So of course that's, uh, you know, I can't say that about all my clients and that was a very special thing, but, uh, yeah, yeah I, I actually try to treat that person, um, say it's an hour lesson. So I always try to treat that person like they're my best friend in that hour, just completely being present, um, interested, engaged, um, friendly, helpful, you know, just like being totally focused in on that person and, and, totally dedicated to their success as a, as a guitarist and just doing whatever I can to motivate them and help them and, and just get them stoked up about the guitar and coming back the next week, you know, so they can keep on getting better and we can keep on developing our friendship. And so I can continue having a, having a viable business. Yeah, that, that, that's great. And, and cause really what you're doing there uh, is, is showing them or you, you you know it's the care factor it's the fact that things that you know a lot of what I, what you said there if we take the, the fact that you're asking about you know how's your dog which i spoke about the week before it shows you're listening you know and, and when people are listening to what we're saying then that that immediately means that they care about us and if someone cares about us again it's the reciprocal well, well this person is definitely cares about me so they obviously care about my guitar learning they're thinking about what I'm doing and how I'm going and and I think that that's really important that when you yeah when you're working with any client whether it be a, a student or, or whatever in any business really if you can show them that you care then they're going to trust you more when these are the little signs these are the little things that we're picking up on uh, you know take take it with the relationship with your wife as you would well know if you come home and blurt out all your problems every day and never ask her how her day was, you're probably not going to last very long, right? The divorce papers are going to come out pretty quickly. Um, and you'll think, what happened? You know, I didn't do anything wrong. Yes, you did. You never listened to me. You never asked me how my day was. You never cared. Um, so, yeah, it's the same with students. Yeah. So I, I that's a, that's an area of time that during that first five minutes when they're taking their guitar out of their case, plugging it into an amp, plugging it into a tuner, tuning up their guitar, um, you know, and as as a lot of you guys know, um, beginners are quite slow at tuning their guitars, and you, you just strike up a conversation with them while they're doing that, you know, and um, and it just like it really kind of sets the tone for for a nice interaction for the next hour or however long you're going to be spending with that person. But the the core of what I'm really saying is like figure out how to be likable, you know, and and um, and there's books on that, um, you know, and and a lot of people are. Uh, like I've got a buddy who's a great guitar player, one of my best friends, and he hates teaching guitar. He just can't handle it. He's, he's not, not, doesn't have that patience or, and, and in fact, it like disturbs him when he teaches people <laughs> guitar. And it's, you know, so anyways, like that guy should not teach guitar. Like he should not um, pursue that. And, and I would suggest for anybody out, out there that's like, you know, frustrated by teaching beginners or whatever, um, like, yeah, you've got to have a ton of empathy and patience and, um, and, and care about people in some way. Um, and that's like really the core of, and, and so like, if you don't have those elements, if you don't have empathy and patience and, um, and stuff like that, don't teach guitar. Find, how about you find somebody else 
that um, that has those likability characteristics, and then you can focus on the marketing. You can be the marketing guy and the student getter guy, you know. Yep. And then there's there's somebody else that's going to actually have that interaction because that's what it's all about is getting those people coming back week after week, year after year, you know. And then all of a sudden, yeah, it's like you don't even really have to do marketing anymore because then you just have a a student base and a client base that trusts you and and they'll buy all your products that come out and and they'll continue taking lessons with you and anyways that I, yeah I can't, really I really get it can't emphasize that enough obviously yeah well well that that sort of is really good because you, again one of the things that we we get into here which which I'm going to sort of pick your brain a little bit on is the the fact that now you can go online you don't have to deal with anybody you can do everything online and so you can build a very successful business where you're you, you know, there's still relationships involved, but you can keep them at an arm's length. Uh, you know, the, I don't, as most people who know me, I don't keep a mobile phone on me, right? I don't carry mobile phones with me. So the, 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 the idea is that I can't be interrupted. I go when I'm ready, when it's my, when I want to, when I want to communicate, I go online and communicate, but I don't carry a mobile phone with me with it ringing all the time, you know, to get my attention. So if you, it depends on, and that's, that's, that suits my personality really well. I remember the days of, especially when I was teaching, I hated being interrupted. I hated if the phone rang or someone came in and said, oh, there's a call for you or someone wants to talk. It's like, I'm teaching. This is teaching time, you know? Um, and, and so I, I realized that that people often don't respect your boundaries because they don't know your boundaries. You've got to set up your own boundaries. And that's where, yeah, really what I'm talking about here is in the case of doing what you're good at and if you're if teaching and working with people is not what is not your thing it doesn't make you excited and, and you're not very good at it there's so many other areas you can do like you said marketing uh, you know whatever there's so many different areas developing programs uh, you know doing Facebook ads whatever it is there's lots of opportunity yeah and so what I was doing was um, um, yeah like I said I, I have that natural kind of empathy and patience with people and I love helping people and coaching people. Um, and then also I was really interested in marketing and creating my own business and, um, and yeah, and creating a passive income and all this kind of stuff. So I was kind of wearing both hats and it can completely become overwhelming, you know, and, and in some ways I kind of wish that, um, I kind of am doing what I'm doing now, which I'm not really teaching a lot of one-on-one -on -one lessons. I've got a guy that does that for me. I found a very highly likable person, um, and he's uh, it's this guy named Mike, and I've been working with him for years, and he's also produced video courses under our Campfire Guitar Star brand, and he handles all of our one-on-one -on -one lessons, pretty much. I, I teach like one or two people a week, and, so, and I'll, I'll fill in for him if he's sick. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. Yeah, so I'm kind of wearing the marketing hat, and he's doing the actual one-on-one -on -one interaction. Um, because yeah, it can be really kind of tricky to wear both hats, you know. Because, um, like, let's face it, like, we didn't uh, when we were little kids, we didn't say to our mom and say, mom and dads like, when I grow up, I want to be a guitar teacher. No, Did, I don't know never. You, said, never. <laughs> you never said that. No, and funnily enough, my daughter says she wants to be a teacher when she grows up, but uh, I, I don't ever remember wanting to be a teacher of any kind. Um, being a mu musician um, was was you know really the main thing. That was I think probably one of the only things. Or maybe rugby league player for a while, but uh, that you know music took over that pretty quickly. So. Yeah, exactly. And that was one one point that I wanted to uh, bring up on this call today, which was um, you know just that that idea of when we first started getting into music and uh, was to be a musician, okay? And then what usually happens, and maybe you can relate in it, because I know that this is part of my story, is that um, I saw the route of working at guitar stores or working construction or working these jobs I basically hated. Yep. And I was like, how can I make the most money possible and work the least amount of time possible so I can focus on guitar and music. You know, how do I start gigging more and playing more and recording more, writing more, um, you know, and, and crafting my sound as a musician and how do I get to the big stages and, and be a rock star or whatever. Um, and, but, uh, so I, I saw guitar teaching as a, as a, a route to support that mission. Um, 
And so that's um, what that's what teaching, teaching basically, basically is, was the, the, the desire, desire to be able to uh, uh, not work in a nine to five, five whatever job. Yeah. Yeah, and I think uh, I mean you definitely talk to more guitar teachers than I do, but uh, I mean, isn't that what what happens to most people? It's like they they uh, they started out playing guitar and be wanting just be being interested in guitar. And then they started teaching guitar as a way to make money, basically. Is, it, is yeah. that fair to say or what? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. They got hungry. It's like, well, I need to eat, so I might have to go and get a job whether I'm actually going to get paid reliably. I, you know, and I totally agree. Is I started in retail, uh, and that was really the reliable income. And the gigs, they, they were good, but they weren't as reliable. And you know, every gig was a bit different, and you know, you didn't get paid that well most of the time anyway. And and then I started doing the teaching, and I was doing all this in my teens. I was working in retail quite young, uh, because my parents had shops. But yeah, the idea was that if I teaching now, I can earn more per hour because instead of you know working for someone in a retail job where you're getting the retail award, you you actually can earn more as a teacher, you know, mm. opposed to you know. Back in those days, you know, retail award was like five dollars an hour, and I could teach for you know twenty five dollars an hour. Back in the you know the eighties, so oh, exactly. very attractive. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, I mean, like double, triple, quadruple your income uh, or your hourly rate, anyways, by teaching guitar. It's like that's a no brainer, you know. Um, so, yeah. but yeah, that's kind of what I wanted to bring up in the call at, at some point. Was like it just depends on what you want to do. Where do you want to? What do you actually want to do? Is it to wear all those hats? Do you want to be the marketing guy and the teacher? Do you want to just be the teacher and have a, have a marketing guy? Do you want to be the marketer and have a teacher? Um, do you, do you want to be a musician? Is that like really actually your goal is to, you know, um, play and, and write your own music or maybe it's just to get gigs and not have to have to worry about, you know, the inconsistency and the low pay. But let's face it, we love, we all love playing live and playing guitar and playing music. Um, because again, like that's like, that's what we got into first. And we didn't grow up saying, mom, dad, I want to be a guitar teacher when I grow up. Hell no. We were like, I want to be a rock star when I grow up, you know? Yeah. And then so some, somehow, some way we, we started, ended up teaching guitar and it's a very respectable, awesome job. You know, I wouldn't have it any other way. I love what I do. Um, and it's, you know, it's pretty incredible. Um, so, but yeah, that's, uh, it just really depends on what you guys want to do, you know? And I just, just two seconds ago, I just established like a bunch of different scenarios. But for me, um, I, d I found out a while ago, like I I've toured with, with, uh, national billboard, uh, charting bands and played for up to, uh, 10,000 people, all that kind of stuff, which is really cool. And however, I found myself, uh, not very happy, like with the music that I was playing. Um, and I, I found out that playing other people's music, even though I was making money playing music, I would rather teach guitar or I would rather be behind my computer crushing it on YouTube or my blog or producing the next, the next video uh, course or whatever. Um, I wanted to make money doing that so that I could focus on uh, what I'm doing now, which is in an original band, making music that excites me. Um, and I can go out and play some sort of empty club and make no money and feel great about it because mm. I'm like, I'm playing my favorite music and guess what? I'm making uh, a great solid passive income with my guitar teaching business, yep. you know? And so that that's created a lot of fulfillment in me um, where, whereas I'm just wearing the marketing cap right now. I've got my lesson guy, I'm the marketing guy and I'm able to play and perform music at the highest level and have the most artistic freedom that I've ever had in my life. And I'm making more money than I ever have. Yep. And the marketing so, guy is, is, is funding it all. He's the guy that's yeah, making it happen for you. And, and, I, and I think, you know, if anyone's ever read Jimi Hendrix's uh, biography, uh, that he was quite miserable for, especially in the latter years of his career up until, uh, you know, in those early years, he was very inspired. Um, beautiful. There you go. <laughs> Fantastic. And and, and so, yeah. So so you you know, right? You know, he he became 
quite miserable. And, and there's a there's a point where they talk about when he had that time in Hawaii, he, he was the happiest he'd been for a long time. Uh, and and he, he, the, the reason was is that, that I, from my understanding, and, and I see this a lot, because you think about a lot of musicians, a lot of performers uh, who, who get involved with heavily in drugs, drinking, uh, you know, and are quite unhappy, yet you look at it and you think, you've got it all, you, you're the rock star, you've got it all, what, what's wrong with you? I remember, um, you know, seeing, this was years ago, Joe Walsh in Sydney, um, and he was off his face on cocaine, and it was just so sad to, to look at him because he was one of my heroes, and he was a very sad, depressed man, um, alcoholic and whatever, and, and, and he he went through many years of very tough times, and you think, how, how can you... Be like that. You're so talented. You're, you're you're one of the world's you know best bands ever. How, how can you be like that? But what happens a lot in in the industry, and and I think this this doesn't get talked about enough, is that there you can become a musician and also a slave to to what you do. So you know how many times do you want to play Hotel California? Seriously, you know how many times do you want to play that solo? If you're a creative musician, which is usually where these bands come from, to create you know, a Hotel California or to create a Stairway to Heaven or, you know, whatever. You've, you're a very creative individual and th then you're told, okay, for the next 30 years, you just got to play the same songs over and over again, um, night after night. Uh, it, it it must be very difficult because it's, and, and that's where I, you know, I, I made that choice and, and it sounds partly that you're making that choice as well, is you want to hold on to your own autonomy. You, you want your freedom. You want to be able to be creative on your terms. You don't want to be a slave to a job or even a gig, even a tour, uh, you know, no matter how high, high, much money it's paying and no matter how many girls are throwing you at, at, at throwing themselves at you, sometimes those perks just aren't enough to, to keep you going. Would you yeah. agree? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you make it also make me think about um, uh, like I, I'm in Alberta, Canada, which is uh, one of the highest producers of oil um, in North America. And so a lot of my uh, friends from high school work in the oil patch, you know, the, the oil and gas industry. Um, and uh, like my buddy says, the, the roads there are paved in gold, you know, like you can make like these guys they just show up and you can start making a six figure income. Um, but then what happens is they they buy the the house and the car and they start the family and and they've got all these expenses and guess what they have to keep on going back up to uh, to the oil patch and crushing this like really dirty nasty uh, you know not very nice job um, to support that lifestyle so they get stuck in it. Um, but what's cool about guitar teaching is of course now with the uh, the online factor is that it's entirely possible to create passive income streams and uh, and to live that life of your dreams um, and there's no question that it takes a lot of time and a lot of effort and <laughs> you know it's not hustle, a, hustle hustle yeah yeah it's not a not a walk in the park um, but but man I'll tell you what like uh, I'm just the most happy that I've ever been uh, because of the way that I've set up my life right now which is uh, you know I've got uh, I've got a team in place, a guy that that actually does the one-on-one -on -one lessons, um, and I've got my video courses. People are finding me on YouTube. People are buying our products and services every single day, um, yep. and I'm I'm in an original band right now that nobody's ever heard of, and uh, you know we're I've written all these songs that I, I'm really proud of and I'm really excited about. Does the um, band have a name? Is it something that we can? Look up yet? Uh, right now, we're going by the name the Infinite Prime. The Infinite and, uh, Prime. Okay, yeah. good. So, uh, you heard it here first, guys. You heard it here first. That's right. That's right. So yeah, so we've just actually showed up at some jam nights, um, and we're performing our our songs and and just like kind of you know breaking the seal, just kind of getting out there and and testing the waters and seeing how it feels to play these songs live and stuff like that. Um, but man, I don't know. It's like you know, I was signing autographs and. And playing big stages for ten thousand people and stuff like that, um, and man, like that was a lot of fun. There's no question. However, I'm feeling like so much more fulfilled and happy um, doing doing it this way. So, yeah, I don't know. And then, of course, you know, this is just the start of start of it all. But uh, um, you know, there's absolutely we're going to be making money with with that band down down the road and stuff like that too. So it's just going to be another. 
uh, source of, of income. So, yeah, I don't know. I guess that's that's one of the big things is like just kind of deciding which which way that you want to want to go. And uh, because uh, what I found myself doing was uh, I was making over eight thousand dollars a month by teaching guitar. However, I basically had no life. You know, that was a lot of one on one time with people. And guess what? After six or seven hours of teaching guitar, I didn't want to go to the rehearsal space. I didn't want to like sit in my same studio and start recording music. I was like ready to get off my ass and you know go somewhere and do something else. Um, yeah, and especially also, when you're sitting sitting all day. Yeah, you, the, the last thing you want to do is be sitting with a guitar somewhere. You want to be uh, walking or in the gym or swimming or something. Yeah, yeah, and so, um, so yeah, I'm actually I'm making less money than than I was then, but I have so so much more freedom in my lifestyle. And, uh, yep. and so, but yeah, like, because I started finding out that like with, without music in my life, without me actually performing, recording, writing music, jamming and stuff like that, I actually become kind of an unhappy person. And, um, because I love it. And I, I mean, that's, uh, and I think that, you know, music is a crazy thing. It's like, we're so attracted to it and it gets just embedded in our bones and we just love it and we do crazy things for it and all this kind of stuff. And then. Um, we get into guitar teaching, and then even though it's very complementary to guitar playing, obviously, you know, it's the exact same thing, um, but it's so it's a very different kind of practice and can kind of be, uh, it can kind of suck the fun out of it or the juices or the, um, and, but yeah, it just really depends on what somebody wants to do. If you want to be that guy that makes 8,000 bucks a month um, teaching guitar, you can do that. Yep. And that's really cool with, with, uh, but you teaching. better love it. You better love doing that much teaching. <laughs> yeah, you bet. <laughs> yeah, it's and and I think you know I think that what's really important is that we're building those assets, those you know the passive streams. You getting you know the idea of the the passive income stream is you know very utopian and it's not something that that's easily attained, but it should be the goal, and and that's the. That's what I talk about is making it the goal. I, I the, the way that I see it and the way that I, you know, and I went through phases, but, you know, I started off by teaching myself and making, you know, good money. And then it was like, well, okay, I'm making good money, but I'm also working long hours to, to do this. What's the next stage? Well, now I employ people. Okay, I employ people. That comes with its own problems, its own hassles. I don't make as much money. I've got to get more students, got to ramp up the marketing, et cetera. So you go to that next stage and then you see the, you know the challenges with that and decide whether or not that's for you for some people that's where they stop that's what they do really well they manage a team really really well so that's great then then to me there was the next phase which was to uh to group teach i thought well if i group teach and i sold my original school and with like 450 students but without the teachers employed obviously and then i went and, and went from the private model to the group model I thought well i can make more money and i did i made lots more money teaching group and so I would teach you know group students and then the next phase was okay how about you know I give these teachers the actual businesses by franchising it so that was the next stage let's franchise it and then the next stage was all right well I don't even want to turn up here I don't want to have to even be here what's the next stage go online um, and so all right, how do I get this online? Bang, now I can work with all my clients online anywhere in the world from a laptop or an iPhone, whatever. Um, so there I am. So obviously the final stage for me is to not do anything. It's just for the cash gout of people putting money in my account. Now that's set up um, and I have different kinds of memberships where there are those who just plug into all my online resources. They pay a monthly fee and they get all that stuff. I have a, a VR um, uh, sorry, VA, a virtual assistant who basically takes care of 90% uh, of it. And but then I have my premium clients as well, who I give a lot more time to. So there's still that that there. But as it grows, then eventually you move away from it. So would you agree that's kind of the the, the stages, Will? That that's you're, awesome, man. I really appreciate you laying it out for us like that, like the the stage by stage. That's awesome. Um, and yeah, you know, I went through something really, really similar. Um, started teaching out of a music store, um, started teaching privately, started a, a guitar school, you know, and then I hired somebody and then that guy stole a bunch of my students and had all these kinds of problems. And, 
um, <laughs> you know, and, and all kinds of problems. And then I learned from that. And then I had systems in place to improve that process. And, um, and then, yeah, it was just like, okay, I need to get more students. All that kind of stuff is really, really similar. Um, and then, uh, so what I, I had this big dream of when I was in Vancouver was I had this guitar school. I had my guy working there. Everything was peachy. It didn't matter if I was in the same building, two blocks away, or 5,000 miles away, I could still run that guitar school um, wherever I was. And that was kind of cool, you know? So I, I moved to Los Angeles, um, had a, basically a passive income stream coming in. Um, and of course, I was doing some managing and, and some daily stuff uh, with that business. But, you know, I went to Los Angeles and lived the guitar dream and I joined a big band and toured and, and found out that you know, that wasn't really the lifestyle I wanted and all this kind of stuff. But, um, yeah, yeah. so, uh, but yeah, then meanwhile, I, I got into more of the online stuff. And so, uh, so I started releasing YouTube videos and now we have, uh, over 1.6 million views on the YouTube channel. Uh, we've got a whole back end funnel with various products and services and the whole online marketing, uh, spectrum, you know, Fantastic. That, that that's what I want to sort of dig in with you more because, yeah. One of the things, and I posted an article uh, that I came across recently about how a lot of the major retailers now in the U.S. are in big trouble. Uh, stores like Macy apparently are closing down. Um, there's there's a whole bunch of them, these traditional big retailers. And we, we've seen this coming for some time, and I know you're very savvy in this, and, and I really make an effort to stay on top of things, especially technology and trends and changes. I try not to to become a dinosaur, which is what a lot of people my age and older become. They just allow, they think that everything's going to remain like it was in the 1980s and 90s. Um, and meanwhile, things are changing faster and faster. And so you've got the Amazon who have literally come out of nowhere, uh, you know, 10, 15 years ago, nobody knew of, of Amazon. Nobody ever heard of them. And, and now they are, you know, Bezos is the second wealthiest guy in the world after Bill Gates, I believe, um, and will probably soon become number one. And his focus has been on online, doing online retail. And so, you know, when you when you move to the online world and you look at it, and I've known these stats because I get a lot of, lot of these marketing seminars, of these stats around the growth of the online marketing world or the online world, business world, full stop, is that it's growing something like five, six times faster than the general economy. So that's got to tell you something. It's got to say, well, there's there's the super highway right right there. You can walk on the footpath, or you can jump on the on on the freeway and and you know accelerate your your whatever you're doing. And that's where the the business world and what you're doing, you know, one million more than a million people seeing what you do as a guitar teacher, that was not possible offline, right? To to get a million people to turn up to to your school, um, you know, you. It would it'd take years and years and years to ever for that to ever occur. So moving online, I don't care what kind of teaching you're doing, what kind of business you're doing, uh, you, you've got to move online in one way, shape or form. So what what are your thoughts on that? What are you doing in that respect? You're already making YouTube videos. Are there any tips or advice you would give on getting guitar teachers to move online? Yeah, so um, what you're making me think of is how I started originally getting clients in my door, like how I started building my guitar school. Uh, and this is, um, and I'm assuming that most people listening to this right now are doing something similar. They've got a, uh, like a one-on-one -on -one or a group situation or like basically person to person guitar lessons, like localized guitar lessons. Right. Yep. And so, um, what, uh, what you can start doing is going, uh, it, like just building up your website in a way that it's going to be, start ranking in the search engines. Okay. And I've, I found that that was one of the biggest sources of students, like basically phone calls and emails coming in or people that would search, uh, enter your city guitar lessons or guitar yeah. lessons, enter your city, you know, um, and just showing up on that, on that, like really high end on the top of that first page. And, of and, and what, what did you do? What are some tips that you did to get to that high ranking? Yeah. So, um, Firstly, just having that exact keyword all over your freaking website, which is enter your city guitar lessons. Um, and of course, making it uh, natural and not like making it stuttery and, and weird or, or unnatural, but like trying to, um, as naturally as possible, put in guitar lessons in your city name 
throughout your website as much as possible. Um, having blog pages that, uh, like what, what I did for instance was we had, there was a, the Vancouver Guitar Show. And to this day, if you Google that, my website still shows up because I wrote an article for the Vancouver Guitar Show. And I happen to be running a Vancouver Guitar uh, School. Brilliant. So it's a Brilliant. very complimentary blog article for that for that website. So um, you know, and in in one of my programs where I where I teach guitar teachers is I talk about writing these blog articles such as um, like a review of all the guitar stores in your city. Love it. Right. Brilliant. Right? So Brilliant. That, that's a very complimentary guitar related blog article that's going to be like I said complimentary to your website and your message. Google's yeah. going to see that and they're going to be like, "Huh, guitar enter your city name." You know, like this site is all about guitar and the city. Geez, maybe we should bump this this site up because it all And you're providing sense. good information and, and it's not like you're you know a lot of people get caught up in this idea of don't have any out, outbound links, right, on their their website, keep everybody on your website. And, and well, that's actually not true. Um, and if you read the latest C, C, uh, ACO stuff, uh, you know, literature will tell you very clearly that Google uh, actually likes when you put links to other helpful websites. They see you as somebody who's trying to help people. You're not trying to, you know, contain everybody on your website. Yeah. Well, get this. So, um, and, and the reason that people are thinking that is more from a place of scarcity. Right? They're like, I don't want to send traffic away from my site because I want them on my site. So here's another blog article that, uh, that I recommend writing. Write a blog article of all the guitar lessons in your uh, community, okay? But there's a catch. At the very top of that article, you say, hey, I may be a little bit biased, but I think that our guitar lessons are the best in Chicago or the best in Kansas City or, or whatever and holy smokes there's this directory of guitar lessons and you're at the top of it oh my yep. goodness can you imagine somebody like they search guitar lessons in your city and they land on that page and they're like oh look at this guy he's at the top I, I think I'll phone him it's you, it's totally you're giving away your goal will you're giving away the goal that's fantastic really <laughs> really really good <laughs> yeah so I mean like yeah, just finding those complimentary topics. So guitar stores, guitar lessons, like put that stuff on your site. Um, another big one was uh, having my my business show up in Google Map listings. So um, um, I think that that's still like I'm not doing the local guitar lesson thing anymore. But is that is that still a thing? Like the map that shows up with the yes uh, endpoints. Yep. Yep, so still on Google. That's right. Google my business, and you can have a map listing if you yeah you've got a location. Yep. Yeah, so that was huge for me too because um, my, at, for the longest time, my site wasn't even on the first page, but my Google Map listing was. And people yep. were actually finding me through there. Um, so one thing that I did was um, I got all my students to go to that page and write a review. because, uh, And then all of a sudden, I was the only guy with 30 reviews, 30 five-star reviews, and guess what? I was at the top in the uh, the Google Map listings, right? Yeah. And you know, all the other guitar lessons, they had you know zero or one, uh, one review or whatever. And of course, I'm going to be at the top because look, this guy's got five, like fifty five star ratings. So it, it, it's 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 the absolute best thing you can do for SEO. It's just that you know, there's nothing that trumps having a, your your Google listing map with. You know, 20, 30 good reviews on there with you know a rating of four to five stars, uh, because you think about you know we we bought a, a new place here uh, in in Australia, and the first thing that we needed when we came here was an electrician and a plumber. Guess what? We just went to Google, plumber, electrician, look for who's got the most reviews, uh, and and just there this this is obviously the best person. Um, and and even if if they've somehow staged it, they've gone and gotten 30 people to write all these reviews or they really encourage it. That to me is a proactive entrepreneur who wants business. So I'm happy to, to do business with them. And in both cases, fantastic job. Both of them did an excellent job. Um, and and I, I, I think you're just going to see more and more of that. It, that people don't trust marketing and advertising anywhere near that they trust the next person, the neighbor, the, the, the you know other people in the community, the customers who they really want to hear from. 
uh, they're, they're your absolute best advocate for your business. So yeah. Yeah. And and how many guitar teachers miss that opportunity? Let's face it, you, you can look at any area. There's very few guitar teachers that even have um, more than a few reviews. Um, mm -hmm. And to have one that's got 30 reviews is actually quite rare. Uh, so yeah, just you're, you're going to be on the top. And it is the same in every industry. When I look at, like I said, plumbers, electricians, or looking at for a massage, uh, yes, just yesterday, one guy here on the whole area, he's got 31 reviews. The rest of them, most of them have no reviews. Some of them have one or two, but he's this one guy. Guess who I'm going to be ringing? You know? Yeah. It's, no, exactly. It's, and I mean, that's exactly what people do with a plumber or like an, uh, or an electrician. They're going to do that with guitar teachers too. Okay. So yeah. Google, 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 like get your stuff in the first page. That's going to, it's just so helpful. Um, and then another thing that Google really likes is, and something, uh, if you remember at when we first started talking today, you mentioned that you see my stuff in your Facebook newsfeed regularly, okay? Yep. Now, there's a reason for that. There's a reason why I've got all these links going to my blog. And uh, okay. yep. so, um, and, and, and it's just, uh, so Google likes to see backlinks, and so they actually like it when there's uh, there's links to your website on social media, so on on uh, Facebook and Twitter, if we just use those two examples. So uh, so right now I'm just hashtagging guitar. I'm sending uh, you know I've got a little write up and I'm sending people to my blog about that topic and I'm sharing it on three different uh, sites. I'm sharing it on Campfire Guitar Star Facebook page, um, my Will Ripley Guitars and Lessons page. I'm also sharing it in this uh, beginner guitar players on Facebook group that I started that's got over 800 members right now. Um, 10 people are, are joining it every single day and they're, and I'm just sending traffic to my blog. And so Google will recognize that as, Hey, there's all these backlinks on social media and people are actually clicking at it and engaging with it and, you know, soaking up that content. So, um, it doesn't matter how many Twitter followers or Facebook fans you have. Um, like, for example, on YouTube, we have uh, 18,000 subscribers and, like I said, 1.6 million views. On Facebook, I have 400 likes. Okay, Facebook is just not my area that I've really focused on, or, or yep. you know, and I don't really actually think that it's like. Um, anyways, I won't go into Facebook and, and guitar lessons right now, but uh, uh, but even though. I just have a page there, so I'm going to be sharing those links daily on that page, um, yep. and just getting those social media backlinks and direction to my site, um, which will Google will then just naturally recognize. Hey, there's all these links on these uh, on Facebook and Twitter, you know, these trusted websites, and there's this link going to this page about this topic. Like, we should bump this page up in the search the search rankings because. He's doing what he's doing on these other sites. So exactly, that's it. Yeah, I, I know. I know exactly what we're talking about. And if, if um, you, you know, Facebook, act, what what they're really looking for, and and you know, Google to sort of sum it up, <clears throat> is that they want information that's relevant and recent. Um, you know, they they want to be providing. You know, I always come back to when everyone says, "Well, what do I do? How do I do my website? Or how do I rank it? And you know, what should I do? What are the tricks for Google?" I say think about what Google's trying to do, and even if Google is not there, their algorithms aren't with you today, they will be eventually, they'll catch up. Uh, and and in, in essence, what Google are trying to do is provide for their customers, and their customers are searchers. Like, you know, I, you, you might think they're the advertisers, but, but no, the advertisers are the sponsors of the product that Google are providing, which is search. And so if I search for something, if I search for, uh, you know, massage, you know, I want the best, best results. I don't want a whole bunch of results of, of the wrong things or irrelevant things. If I'm looking yeah. for a guitar teacher, yeah, I want the best guitar teachers in town who provide the best websites with the most information. And how does Google do that? Well, they look at how long people go to that website. If you stay on that website for 10 or 15 minutes opposed to 10 or 15 seconds, then they know that's a good website because people are engaged on that website. So yeah, all these little things, but it comes down, and I think you'll agree, Will, is it comes down to, to the core of what are Google's customers want. They want a good search experience. Would you, would you agree? Yeah, you bet. Absolutely. Um, and um, so, yeah, so, I mean, yeah, Google is super important. Um, 
And the thing is that even if you just learn a little bit about SEO, chances are you're going to know 10 times more than your competition, right? So just a hundred times more in most cases. Yeah. Yeah. And then before you know it, you're going to be blasting past these people. Like you just do in the search engines. I mean, um, and, uh, and yeah, so, uh, that's, that's super, super important. And I was going to mention something else too, but, uh, um, it's left me. <laughs> that's all right. If it comes back, let me know. Look, yeah. with, 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 I think with YouTube, uh, that's a big one as well, which I'll just ask you a couple of quick questions before we, we wrap up. But with, with YouTube, I think, you know, it, it, as, far as, as far as learning guitar, guitar is a visual thing. People want to see it. Right? And, and so that's why I think YouTube is hugely powerful for, uh, you know, getting yourself out there, getting people familiar with you. They might find you on Facebook. They might find you on Google. But YouTube is where they're going to see you. And they're going to say, well, do I like this guy? So if, if I see, uh, and it's it's not a matter of, some people think, well, you know, I don't come across very well in video or I'm a bit shy, etc. I find, um, and I think this is across the board, that, you know, a very high percentage, and I'm talking 90% of guitar teachers or people probably generally, don't want to be on a video. They don't want to put themselves up on YouTube for various reasons. They, they you know, they, it's this, we, you know, we talked about this before um, in another video about the imposter syndrome and people sort of saying, well, if I get up and start playing guitar and so I'm a teacher and someone says, hey, man, you're not that good. You're not as good as you think you are. Um, you shouldn't be teaching because uh, you can't play like Petrucci. It's like, well... Uh, and so there are, there's a lot of fear there, right? They don't want to expose themselves as maybe not being as good as that they, they would hope that they would want to be, or that they're somehow going to get, uh, you know, exposed in one way or another. What, what are your thoughts on that generally? YouTube. Oh man, uh, I've produced over 200 YouTube videos, um, and yeah, had had some really great success with it. I'm not a video person, um, and but I still produced over 200 videos. So, <laughs> someone who's not a video person, that's pretty impressive. Well, I'll tell you, man. I, uh, you know, I had this concept. I was like, okay, I'm going to release all the all my best beginner kind of like cures. I, I call it the, the cures to the common mistakes that beginners make when learning guitar. So I had this like little uh, 12 part video series or something. Um, I set up my studio and it was laborious, man. I, I you know, I set up my video camera and it, it, the sound and didn't look good and the lighting was all off and like that was actually more of a pain in the ass than anything it was just like trying to get everything, you know, looking good and, and right. You can see I, I got some proper lights behind me and, and I've got uh, got a little uh, backdrop now as you can see and some yep, stuff like that. Um, anyway, some basic stuff like that that really helps. And you're not a video guy, right? You got all this stuff, but you're not a video guy. Let's put that on the record. <laughs> it's taken years, but... If, if I, um, uh, but yeah, that first time I said, okay, you know, I, I've got this afternoon. I'm going to pump out these 12 videos. Yeah, I've never sat down in front of a camera before, well, whatever, I'll pan them out, right? And sure enough, it was like, it took me days. It took me days to do this, these 11 videos. Um, I wore out my voice. I, I couldn't talk. I couldn't, uh, I was like, just like being an idiot on, on the camera, you know, like I wasn't being myself. I, felt so unnatural. I felt angry. I was just like, I didn't like it on and on and on. But eventually I got through it. And then of course I had to edit the videos Then I had to organize the files and upload it. It was a total pain in the ass. Um, but the thing is that the next time you do videos, it's so much easier. Okay. Yes. <laughs> It, there's just no other way to explain it. You know what I mean? It's just like you learn, just right? You, you learn and you evolve and you you, you build systems uh, to to make it quicker and easier to to get things done. Yeah, yeah. I know exactly yeah. what you're talking about. The the uh, and I think you know one of the things with YouTube and and the videos is like I've got videos of me you know teaching my daughter from age three and you know progressively up to she's eight now and those those videos themselves have had uh, you know probably collectively about 40 to 50,000 views and and I know a lot of those views have come from uh, you know within our network so because we haven't really done we haven't titled them in any way to get you know lots of views or, or done out there and I really just put them up there uh, for my teachers within the G4 network to be able to show parents and whatever you know this is a three-year-old learning guitar this is the, the founder of g4 teaching his own daughter so you can see that it works 
And, uh, you know, just the value that I've gotten within my network, the guys have said, you know, I showed that video to a parent and they loved it. Uh, you know, so you, you can sometimes the videos when you do them, it's not just a case of trying to get lots of views on, on YouTube. Sometimes it, it, it's more surgical. It's more about having a video, a particular video that could turn just one student into not quitting to, to just hanging in there a bit longer or that could leverage your own lessons to so that you don't have to teach everything in your lesson. And I, I think that a lot of teachers don't use the leverage power of YouTube. So if I'm teaching a concept and someone says, well, I don't really understand that, say, look, we don't have time now, go and watch this video, I'll send it to the link, um, and then you can review that. If you still don't understand it, then we'll review it, re review it next week. So yeah, I think the leverage ability there is a big one as well, so. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so look, that story I just told you, I was producing these videos, I didn't feel good about it, it was years ago. Um, so I got them up online, um, and you know, once in a while I stumble across them because I'm doing work on YouTube, and and I, you know, and there's a comment that shows up on, a, on an old video, and I go and check it out, and I'm reminded of that terrible experience, right? And I, and I see myself, and I'm like, God, I'm like so much better on video now, like, I look like such an idiot back then, or whatever, and, you know, look how I'm dressed or look, look how my stupid things around me or whatever. And, um, uh, and I don't even teach like that anymore. I teach that, that song a different way or whatever it's, but then these same videos have 30, 40, 50,000 views on them, a ton of likes and comments are pouring in saying, Hey man, that cured this problem for me. Thank you so much. That really, really helps on and on and on. Okay. So yeah. even though I wasn't really that excited or, you know, feeling good about my, my presence on camera, I still help some people. So there you go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, you, and, and that's the thing is that, that uh, I think once you get into the momentum of it and start doing it, because, you know, the, the video, a, a lot of guys get hung up on, uh, you know, getting the likes or getting the views and so forth. But I think, that we've just got to get into the habit. What I've seen with YouTube, I've been been researching this a lot lately, of the guys who are very successful. I had Andy on this program not long ago, who you know, he had 50 million views on, on uh, his YouTube channel. Um, he's got he's got the highest rating video, guitar lesson video on the internet, which has got like 15 million views. Um, and the, the thing that, that I find about all these guys is they're consistently doing stuff and it's almost an exact ratio to how consistent they are so if they do a video once a week then they're probably going to be up in the tens of thousands of views after a year if you do one video every week your average video will probably be in the ten tens of thousands um, if you do a video every day for a year you're probably hitting the millions and you can see this pretty consistently across the board. This, the, I, I found quite a few guys now who, like, I look for those ones who've got the high ranks, and they're, they're in the millions, and what you see is just daily videos, video every day they're doing a new video. So they have a system of getting it out there, uh, you know what I mean? And and yeah. somehow they, they, they even build teams uh, where they've got a creative team who are coming up with new ideas every day for them to do videos on. Yeah, and I mean, uh, I know, of course, like you, you see, like, oh man, this video has four hundred thousand views, or you know, thirty six million views. That's crazy, you know. Like, imagine if I had a video with that many views. But the truth is, is that it actually doesn't matter how many views you get. So, um, anybody who's listening right now, I'd actually suggest them to check out my YouTube channel, which is YouTube.com uh, Campfire Guitar Star. And if you search any one of those titles, chances are that video is going to show up on number number uh, like on the first page of Google, and the reason for that is because I uh, I do keyword research. I title my videos. I name my videos. I've got all this kind of like keyword stuff behind the videos, um, and uh, and so yeah. So when you search those videos, those videos will show up. And however, there will be certain videos that show up on the first page of, of YouTube that only have a thousand views or sometimes even less 600 views but that person specifically typed in that exact keyword and found my video okay yeah. and so that's each 600 views isn't a lot on a video it's like oh that's just like small time however those are 600 highly targeted views on YouTube which is a completely different thing 
Um, and then also another thing I want to mention is I feel like YouTube videos are like hit songs. Okay. So um, as you probably know, and anybody who's listening, songwriters will just write and write and write and write, and write. like, you know, think about um, like any like famous rock star. They have like, God knows how many songs they've written in their careers. And then once in a while, one song catches or, uh, you know, in the, you know, for example, like a one hit wonder um, will have a, a song that catches on fire and goes, blows up and goes international. Yep. So YouTube videos are kind of similar in the sense of you have to produce a lot um, and you might get lucky with that hit song um, and that hit YouTube video that really catches. Um, and so my friend did this with, with his company, uh, Project Life Mastery. Um, and uh, and I highly recommend that site for anybody who just wants to get motivation, uh, learn about health. What is it again? Can you say it again? Yeah, Project Life Mastery. Um, okay. It's a personal friend of mine, Stefan, um, and uh, we used to live together, and now he's making $150,000 a month online. So wow. I can tell you <laughs> that, yeah, when we were like 20 years old, you know, sharing uh, houses together, me, my brother, and him, a couple other guys, and now he's like, you know, living, living large. So uh, it's been really inspiring to see that process. So uh, one of the things that really helped him out was he had a hit song or a hit YouTube video um, called My Morning Ritual. So when you type in Morning Ritual, um, by the way, if you don't have a Morning Ritual, suggest you get one. <laughs> and he, one. yeah, he or created sleep into midday. What's that? One or the other. Or sleep into midday, one or the other. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so he created a video on how to um, create a, a morning ritual and it took off. It started getting views, and then before you know it, like last time I checked it at 500,000 views. I'm pretty sure it's well over a million now. Um, and so people found out about this Stefan guy and his company, Project Life Mastery. And that's exactly what's happened with Campfire Guitar Star, is I have 200 videos, yeah, about, I don't know, 150 videos or 200 videos on the YouTube channel. Um, one of them has especially caught fire and has over a million views on it, okay? Um, yeah. And that's been really helpful. However, I don't want to discount the other ones that have 20, 40, uh, 50, 60,000 views um, because those are great too. And then also the ones that only have 600, 1,000 views because those are still, they still can be very highly targeted um, and just like high value keywords that people are searching, people are getting value from, and those people will turn into customers. So yeah, absolutely agree. And and a couple of things out of that which are very very powerful is that the 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 hit song, so to speak, is that you know if you think about a band, let's take you know go back to my my era. You think about Led Zeppelin. That was their fourth album with Stairway to Heaven on it, right? Once people had, had bought that album and heard Stairway to Heaven, like myself, you you go back and buy the the back backlog of albums, right? The back catalog. Um, and so people, when they see your video of, you know, this whatever video went viral, they see that then they're also likely to subscribe to see your future videos, but they're also likely to want to see what you have done before uh, because that video has really caught their attention. So that you often see your older videos, which were sitting on, you know, a couple of thousand views start to kick up. Uh, in, in views as well. So yeah, it's yeah. just that thing, the consistency, keep making them, you get better. And then and then if you're lucky, uh, you know, combination, let's just say, the you know, it's the old saying of um, the more I do, the luckier I get, right? Um, so the, the, the more action you take, the more videos you make, the, the, you're basically buying a lottery ticket in the YouTube lottery. And and so each, each one you do, the odds go up that you uh, you'll hit something. Um, a, a tip that Andy gave me was to to go back. Like even I'm thinking about this video, right? This is going to be over an hour, and there's there's different subjects that we're talking about, and some real gold in this. And to go back and edit this video up into so you know half a dozen different videos on different you know questions and topics, and just post that question, uh, and then go straight to that topic. Yeah, the, you can take the videos you've already got. Your 200 videos could easily be edited and made into a thousand different videos. Well, actually, that's how uh, we ended up with so many videos was I, I totally did that. I called it like mining them for gold. So, um, and just on that topic, I think you, you have a great word there for YouTube, which is like you, you buy a ticket for the YouTube lottery. 
Now, you never know what's going to catch. So I have this video out called Super Easy Electric Guitar Songs for Beginners. Okay? Yep. It was number one on YouTube, and that's the one that has uh, 1.2 or 1, uh, yeah, or like 1.1 million views on it now. Is that my best video? I don't actually think so, but it's something that people were searching for and I had an answer to, and it turns out a lot of people were searching for that. But I actually don't think that it's my best lesson or anything like that. In fact, I have all these other lessons that have 400 or 600 views that I, I, that I personally think that you know, should have you know, over a million views. Um, but anyway, so in that video, for instance, I teach obviously all these super easy electric guitar songs for beginners all these single note riffs, power chord songs. And so what we did was we mined that for gold. It was a 17 minute lesson and we uh, uh, edited that down. So this, then all of a sudden it's just one lesson on how to play Seven Nation Army by the White Stripes, right? So then that so, was a, a lesson itself. Yep. Is that the one that got a million? Which one has got the million view? The big one, the 17 minute one. And then yep. uh, I went in and mined it for gold and uh, made several other small lessons. And yeah, there's some lessons um, that have thousands of views on, on their own. Just And it's the same footage, but I just put on a, a different intro um, and made a, like a, obviously it's gonna be a lot shorter because it's not a 17 minute video, it's just a segment of that 17 minute video. And that yeah. kind of comes down to um, batch recording. So like when I set up this studio with my lights and my, and my mic and uh, you know, my guitar racks and all that kind of stuff, and I get my stuff set up, chances are I'm going to be recording at least five videos, okay? Um, you know, and we did this big batch recording last year where I hired my guy, Mike, and we produced um, 100 videos. Um, and it took him like a month to do it, but once we had those 100 videos, I had a lot of content to focus on to upload that to YouTube. So that's another thing that you can do. So... Um, YouTube, man. Holy smokes. That's a lot of stuff. <laughs> brilliant. Brilliant. Look, we've covered heaps in this video and, um, you know, thank you. I know, you know I only asked for an hour of your time and you've, you've given me more than that, which is, um, you know, I absolutely appreciate, um, Will. And I'm really excited just seeing your evolution and, uh, you know, it, you're just going to continue to grow and because that's the kind of guy you are, you, you've got what, what I call the kind of entrepreneurial hustle. Um, you, you, you're always going to be doing things. You know, there's something that even when we get to a point uh, of being financially free, I know that I crossed that that point a long time ago. And but you 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 don't stop. We just there's a there's a there's kind of a, a fire in you, I guess. By the it's almost like that. By the time you get to that point where you can retire, you don't want to. Uh, you're sort of like, okay, well, this is great. I enjoy it because you've found that place where you can do what you want to do. You've got your own creative space. I can work whenever I like. Uh, you know, there are certain a couple of hours in every day that I dedicate to doing the things I have to do for my clients, which I don't, you know, I don't mind doing at all. Um, but the rest of the time, it's very much creative time and I get to choose what I want to do. And I think that, you know, that hustle, that entrepreneurial hustle, the, you know, quality, I can see that in you and, and, and it's, you're just going to continue to grow and, and get better and better. Um, very much, man. I appreciate that. Before we finish up, I just want to ask you uh, one more one more question. Basically, are there any any books, websites, blogs that you recommend uh, from the point of view of of business teaching, guitar teaching business? Anything you could recommend along those lines? Yeah, I made a couple of notes here. So, and we mentioned a couple of them already throughout the uh, the call today. Uh, one yep. of them is my friend Stefan from Project Life Mastery. I uh, highly recommend checking out his stuff. He's very um, uh, just puts out really valuable content, a really knowledgeable guy, and, and he's just the real deal. Um, speaking of which, here's a quote from him, um, not a direct quote, it's a little bit different, but he talks about when he first got financially free and how um, uh, he was like, yeah, I'm financially free, great, I can just hang out and watch movies, you know? But you get bored of that pretty quick. You know? so, um, anyway, so so yeah, check out Stefan from Life uh, Project Life Mastery. Uh, I really like the book Dot Com Secrets by Russell Brunson. Um, yeah, he's great. And, yeah, I really get a lot of value from that. And um, also, he's got the ClickFunnels 
Yeah, yeah exactly. And I, I went to Funnel Hacking last year, which is his seminar, um, yep. which is really valuable. And then um, also really recommend the Ask Formula by Ryan Levesque. Um, that's been really, uh, really interesting to just understand. Like, you read that book, and I trust you, um, that I, or I promise you that your marketing is going to become so easy because you'll just understand exactly what your customers want. And then you just write that in your marketing and you give that to your customers. And so there's no more guessing. There's no more trial and error. Uh, he's got this, this survey formula. You, uh, you just survey. It's brilliant. it's brilliant. I know exactly. Yeah, I've seen it. It's, it's brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, it's super good. Like my marketing to guitar players has become so much easier now after going through that system and, and of course, applying what's, uh, what he talks about. We talked about uh, how to win friends and influence people. Um, and it comes back to that likability factor, you know, and being highly likable as a guitar teacher and a person and uh, having those, that, that repeat customer. Um, and then uh, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, I, th I found really uh, influential. And, and, and another uh, classic, yeah. I yeah. think everybody who's anybody in the uh, your personal development industry recommends that book. Um, so if you yeah, if you haven't read that book, then yeah, you're seriously missing out. Yeah, it's a great great. Yeah, and, and also just really anything by Tony Robbins um, and Evan Pagan is another great guy to check out. I, I personally learned a lot of sales from Evan Pagan. Um, he references this book called Spin Selling a lot uh, by Neil Rackham, and yeah. Check out Evan Pagan, like that guy just really knows how to sell, sell stuff. And I always tell uh, the guitar teachers that I train that if, uh, if you don't think of you, your job as, as being a salesman, you're actually totally wrong because there's a huge sales element in guitar teaching. Um, and if you don't, and, and I was lucky because I came from, uh, I did some sales training and some retail. It sounds like you came from a similar background. Um, yeah. And and that was just so so helpful to start teaching guitar and know um, how to communicate with people about sales. So yeah, yeah. sales S -s sales gets a bad rap, right? And it, it's 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 yeah. often sure. thought of as a uh, you know the con sleazy type person who's trying to get your money. And, and but that's not what real selling is. Real selling is finding what people want, their needs, that you know, and fulfilling that uh, in in with value. Uh, that's yeah. really, yeah. in my opinion. Too. And I really believe it's totally tied in with that likability factor. And then finding that that unique blend of likability and salesmanship, like, yeah. man, you're gonna have a great business if you can if you can get some sort of level of mastery in those two things. Fantastic! Wow, this this has been a, an amazing session. Thank you so much, Will. Um, and just to before we sign off, just can you just tell us your website again one more time? Sure, yeah, uh, willripley.com um, and campfireguitarstar.com. That will give you the breakdown of basically all my projects and, and what I'm up to. So, um, yeah, but thanks for having me, man. It's, uh, you know, like I said at the beginning, I really love coaching people, and, and hopefully the people listening to this call got some sort of level of value. And if they're still listening to it, maybe they, they stuck it out with us to the very end. And, um, and so that's a good sign. So I really appreciate whoever's listening to this right now um, and I'm happy to serve and it really fulfills me and gets me stoked up to, uh, to help. So hopefully I, I fulfilled that. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Brilliant. Th thank you. We'll just hang on there. I'm going to end the call. Thank you for everybody who uh, tuned in and those of you are obviously going to, most of you are going to be watching this on the replay. Uh, if you've got any questions as always, I'll be posting Will's website below as well. So you can message him directly if you want to, or you can uh, contact me and any questions on teaching guitar, the business of guitar, just throw them out there. I'll try and include them in future episodes. Uh, and I'll also, you know, if, if there's any questions with previous people who've spoken to, like Will, um, I'll direct the question to him and, and see if we can get some feedback from him. Um, obviously, a very busy man, but the, you know, always, always eager to help. So again, thank you, Will, and thank you for everybody for tuning in. Thanks, guys. Yeah.